Hello. In this short video, I'm going to be demonstrating the use of the Eclipse IDE to build and deploy a Java EE7 example application called Cargo Tracker. I'm going to use two models to actually deploy and test this application. In the first instance, I'm going to deploy the application to a WebLogic server instance using the local development domain with the run as server model that Eclipse supports. In the second part of the demonstration, I'm going to deploy and run the application using the new multi-tenant feature of WebLogic Server by deploying the application to separate partitions. Now that I'm in my Eclipse environment, you can see on the left-hand pane that I've already imported the Cargo Tracker application. The Cargo Tracker application is built using Java EE7 APIs services and serves to demonstrate some of the new features available in Java EE7, such as the WebSocket API, the Batch API, and so forth. It also demonstrates the use of the new and updated APIs, such as EJBs, CDI, and particularly the new JMS API. Down the bottom, I have registered an instance of WebLogic Server 12.2.1 with Eclipse. In the first part of the demonstration, I'm going to run the application on my WebLogic Server 12.2.1 instance using the typical model where I run it locally from the Eclipse environment. So if I now click Run As, Run On Server for this application, the first thing it's going to do is launch the local WebLogic server instance. So it will start it up. It will then deploy the application to that instance and load the index page for me. Sample data is loaded and the application is accessed. Clicking around the application, we can see the interfaces that it provides. If we click into the administration side of things, we can see that I'm presented with a dashboard which shows the shipments that have been worked through the system, those that are routed, those that are non-routed, and those that are claimed. Clicking through into a specific shipment, I can see the details of where it was loaded, unloaded, and the various times that those things occurred. So this is an application that represents the tracking and movement of shipments across different ports of the world. I won't go into too many details of the application in the order of time. If I go into the application and I make a, a small change, for instance I come into the index page and I change the header, if I now come back into the application, we can see that that change has been picked up and automatically uh, reused by the deployed application. So at that point, I've deployed the application to the base domain within my WebLogic Server instance. Within this same WebLogic Server instance, I also have a couple of partitions that I have created. If we bring up the admin console, and I log in. We can see one of the new features is the domain partition. If I click into this, we can see that I've got two domain partitions created that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. The first one is called test, and the second one is called UAT. These represent independent, isolated partitions running within WebLogic Server that I can deploy applications to, configure resources on, and so forth, and have them operate independently within this same domain. If I make a change to the application again, and let's say this time, I'm gonna change dev, I'm gonna change it to test, and what I'm gonna do to test this specific example is I'm going to run this, but I'm going to deploy it to my test partition. 
In this case, I'm going to use a Maven build where I'm going to invoke the WebLogic Maven plugin and tell it the specific partition that I want to deploy this to. So I click a pre-configured run configuration that I created. This is going to ask me for the partition I want to deploy to. I'll use test. Now we can see that again we're building the project. I'm invoking the WebLogic Maven plugin and I'm deploying it to the test partition. And there we can see it there. Good. So this version of the application is going to be available at the test virtual target. So if I now come in and I prefix my URL with test, I can see the application is now deployed to the test partition, accessed via my test virtual target, and there is that version of the application. Continuing on that theme, if I now have made some further changes to the application, uh, and I wish to deploy it against another partition, I could be moving the application between test and UAT, for instance. Um, I can now take this and deploy it to the UAT partition in exactly the same manner. Again, these are isolated instances of partitions and the application. We'll come back into the Maven build. I'll execute my run configuration for Maven deploy. This time I'm going to tell it to use the UAT partition. Again, I'm invoking the Maven build, invoking the WebLogic Maven plugin, but this time I've targeted that the UAT virtual target and partition. If I come back into my application, I can see that my test application is still running as it was. No change there at all. So that's still showing the test state. If I access the other partition, which should have the UAT change, there we can see that this is now representing the UAT version of this application. Again, all running against the same WebLogic server instance, utilizing the new multi-tenant partition capability. Just to finish with, I will open up the Maven POM file and just show you how I created the deployment model for the multi-tenant profile. So in this case, I've created a profile for my multi-tenant operations. And here, I've actually configured a property that defines the partition that I want to deploy it to. And then when I'm invoking the WebLogic Maven plugin, as part of the configuration, I pass through that partition. This enables me to specify test, UAT, etc. as the target for the deployment operation. As a final state, I'll show you how I configured that as a run configuration. So within Eclipse, it has this model that enables me to define run configurations. And here I have my MT Maven deploy. We can see that it's calling the profile WebLogic MT. The only thing that I've done that's enabled this, uh, enabled me to specify the actual target partition is I've set up a parameter. And here we can see that the parameter name is wls.partition. So this is the system property or the, the property that's used by the WebLogic Maven plugin. And I've asked to launch the string prompt with a title of partition and a default value of test. So when I run this, it pops up the input dialog box, asks me for the value of partition, lets me enter it, and then uses that when invokes the WebLogic Maven plugin. So that's how it's all tied together. All right, with that, I'd like to say thank you, and I hope this video demonstrated for you how you can easily deploy two partitions using Eclipse, Maven, and the WebLogic Maven plugin.